So we talked about redemptive authority last Sunday. Today we're going to talk about inherited authority and also positional authority. I want us to understand these aspects. And eventually I want each one of us, I really desire for each one of us to walk in that sense of spiritual authority. So let's talk about inherited authority. In the spiritual realm, you are a child of God. You are a son and a daughter of Almighty God. So when the spiritual world looks at you, what do they see? They see a son or a daughter of God. They see somebody who belongs to the family of of God. And because of that, God says, you carry authority. God himself calls you his heir and joint heir with Christ. That means everything that is or was given to Christ as the son of God now is yours. A joint heir with Christ. Spiritual world is very aware of your spiritual standing. They know that you are a son and a daughter of God. They know that you are in a place of authority and dominion over them. You are royalty. You are an heir of God and a joint heir with Christ. And when you deal with demonic powers, you got to deal with that. In, from that position, from that place of being an heir of God and a joint heir with Christ. And let's talk about our positional authority. God has vested authority in us simply by placing us in Christ on his throne. That's your spiritual position. Spiritually, you are seated with Christ. Amen? So whatever situation, you see the enemy coming against you, the God of peace will crush Satan underneath your feet. Because you have redemptive authority. You have inherited authority. And God has given you positional authority. He's given it to you. So we'll continue these other two points next Sunday. But let's just talk about some of the application side of this. What do we have authority over? What do we have authority over? Let's go to Luke chapter 10, verse 19. What did he say? I'm giving you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all. That means whatever, whatever Satan and demons are doing, over all the power of the enemy. If you see them at work, Whatever the appearance may be, whatever the expression may be, you have authority over it. Number one, we have authority over Satan, demons, demonic works, and influences. So when the devil is at work, you have authority over it. And you see in the New Testament, some sicknesses, some diseases were caused by the presence of evil spirits. And like we saw, we also have authority where natural course of events. I'll say this and we'll wrap up. We have authority over circumstances, situations, and natural elements. Like he said, you know, if something happens wrong, you can, it will not hurt you. It's not going to affect you. So over circumstances, situations, Jesus demonstrated that to us. Um, he was in the middle of a storm and he said, peace be still. Now he didn't go around controlling the weather every day. That was not what he did. But in a situation like that, he knew he could exercise authority over natural elements. So in your own life, I want you to think about this. When you are faced with some difficult situation, if you feel that there is demonic powers behind this, exercise your authority. Don't keep quiet. Until you exercise your authority, nothing is going to happen because God vested that authority in you, in the church, in you and me. So it's our responsibility to exercise it. It's time for you and me as believers to rise up and walk in this. And this belongs to every believer regardless of your age. A 15-year-old child of God has the same authority vested in her or him as 
somebody, let's say, you know, who is 40 or 50, whatever. Age doesn't matter. You're talking about spiritual realities. 